Today, we are talking terpenes, trichomes, and UV light. What the scientists are saying, what growers are seeing, and why both of them might be right. Come on, let's get into it, but before we do, Today's video is brought to you by Real Grow Lab. If you want to connect with the best growers from all over the world, get tips and tricks on how to grow the dankest plants possible, and not have to worry about the censorship we get from YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, go check out realgrowlab.com. Get all kinds of great grow talk Q&A. Plus, see all the stuff YouTube won't let me show you in these videos. Sign up and join our growing community over at realgrowlab.com. Or download the app at the Apple or Android App Store. Now let's get back to today's video. Come on, High C. Let's get into this one. This one's controversial, man. I, I was almost afraid to do this video. We are loitering in the arena of hot topics, sir. <laughs> we are. So uh, I can't wait to see the comment section. <laughs> Dude, this is all good. This is about UV light, specifically UVB. And I hear so many growers telling me you get the anecdotal evidence from growers. I know great growers. I know growers that do A-B testing just like you would do, uh, you know, scientists would do. And I'm hearing about definite benefits, much frostier bud, 25% frostier bud. So I want to talk about it, but there's a lot of talk about it not being effective. So let's okay. get into the science of it, the details. Okay, so first of all, UV lights, you said, I think you said UVB lights? Yes. What exactly is that? Okay, so you got the PAR range that we talked about, the photosynthetic active range where the plant sees the light, it takes it, it makes it into plant material. It grows the plant. And that's usually what I'm getting from my full spectrum yep. LEDs. Yep. Above that, it's red. So that's where above, I think, what we say, 730 is far red. That's on the upper part of that. That's outside. That's above 700. That doesn't build the plant's photosynthesis it does weird things to it. it makes it stretch changes morphology same with down low under 400 that's your blues you get to your ultraviolet there and you get to, it starts with a uh, uva then it goes to uvb and then it goes to uvc each each one uh, a b and c they start getting shorter the shorter they get the, the more, shorter what? Uh, the, I'm sorry, the wavelengths. They're measured in nanometers. All this is 400 nanometers, 300 gotcha. nanometers. So once it goes down, when those nanometers, when it gets really small, they can penetrate anywhere. You know, microwaves are on the other side of UV, uh, X-rays, gamma rays, all that stuff. And it gets more violent, we'll say. They get more destructive as you go down. So UVA, they're using them in a lot of lights. That's a little complementary. It uh, doesn't do too much. Maybe brings out a little bit more pigments in the plant. Uh, UVB is where you get your sunburns from and in, in, you know, on our skin. And that's a stress response. It elicits a stress response response in cannabis and it i can show you that it increases terpenes it increases cannabinoids and it just makes more frost so that's the claim uvb yeah. increases and why do they why do people think that well, because it's a sunscreen it does make sense right you can anthropomorphize it we change pigments when we're in the sun uh the plant wants to make this sunscreen so what are those trichomes so these big bulbs you know these big balls on top of the plant and that's blocking the sun to keep it from damaging the leaf material so it can photosynthesize yeah, so increasing the uvb hypothetically is going to give you more frost it's going to require uh, a stress response and more protection from the plant and we see this i mean when we think of uh, uh, plants i think of kush i think of afghani all those were at altitude. I mean, the Kush Mountains, I think, are from like 9,000 to 30,000 feet up. So those plants were conditioned over thousands of years to make more trichomes. That's why, that's why there's such good strains to start out with, those land race varieties. Even here, we're at a mile high right now. We're 25 to 35% more UVB than you get at sea level. And if you go two miles high, which the Kush Mountains are two miles high, uh, you get... 
50, 55% more UV. So there's a UVB. So there's something to this. So the way growers are replicating that is they're trying to replicate just the mid sun peak day, you know, four hours in the mid sun where that plant is going to be getting uh, uh, lots of UV. So they'll put them on for four hours at a time, maybe. Uh, there's all sorts of experimentation going on. Some people put them on for 15 minutes uh, at, you know, an hour for the entire time. Some people put them on for two, two hour bursts. Some folks put them on four hours at the end of, of the harvest. I'm sorry, at the end of the light cycle. So there's all sorts of experimenting going on with this stuff right now. And usually when people are doing this, this is like a late flower thing. Yeah. All trichomes are being produced. It depends if it's the scientists we're talking about or the real growers. Okay, so let's shift gears and talk about the science not the bro science <laughs> this one triggered me i'll say because i was listening to mr grow it super cool if you don't know about mr grow his name's chris he's a friend of mine great content he had on dr bruce bugby i've talked to bruce bugby uh he's one of the guys that he is the guy that's the actual scientist he's a lighting scientist he's done work with nasa he works at utah state university or he's a professor there didn't he grow cannabis in space i don't know if he grew cannabis in space but he's one of them guys that they would be like hey what kind of what nanometer lights do we need if we're gonna grow you know plants in outer space okay he's like that that level so it's like having someone like that paying attention to cannabis it it's cool it's it really cool. cool man but he's had some controversial or no nah, he talks like a scientist okay and you have to listen to him like somebody that understands science i guess sir anyway i heard dr bugby on the mr grow it show and he was saying that there's no evidence that uvb brings on more trichomes or more cannabinoids and that really goes against what I've been hearing for the last year, 18 months from my growers. And it made me scratch my head. I was kind of sitting around chilling, had a lot of time. So I rewound it. Come on, what do they say? Words matter, right? I see. Absolutely. Yeah, he's a scientist. So he needs clear evidence. He, ne he needs a, a peer reviewed research experiment that says that UVB clearly increases cannabinoids. And that as a scientist, then he's comfortable to say it. I think also here's where the, as a scientist, he can say there's no evidence, but as a real world person, the absence of evidence doesn't mean evidence of absence. Whoa, man. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I just trust the growers, man. I, I see what the growers are doing. They're doing legitimate experiments. And then he is a guy that's you know funded by a university. It takes a lot of money to do an experiment. When he does something on cannabis, it's a four-month experiment, right? Like a 16-week experiment to grow these plants out. You can only change one variable at a time if you want to learn something. So I was looking. So he did a test himself at Utah State University or him and a couple other uh, professors, and they didn't find any, uh, any difference. They did some with UV A and B, some without UV A and B, and they didn't see any difference. And when I looked at, so I had time, man. It was Saturday, all right? I was just chilling. So I started Googling. I started, I actually looked up. You can find it in Frontiers. It's a journal. And it gives you all the specifics of what they did. And you're like, wait a minute. So Bugby did 700 PPFD of light, which isn't a lot of light, man. That's what all the, the way through too. During, yeah. during veg and bloom, 700 PPFD. Uh, that's what the paper says, yes. And then uh, they had no additional CO2. So now we're at ambient CO2, not very much light, and we're talking about trying to measure a stress response. That's not a very stressful environment. No, it's not a very stressful environment, right? So I can see logically if I only want to measure the one stressor, I would keep sure. everything else not very stressful. But I also can see as a grower the, the compounding effect. If I'm adding three or four stressors, I might see a compounding effect from an additional stressor that I wouldn't see otherwise. Yeah, and just because you did one experiment doesn't make it fact. And Bugby will tell you this himself, man. He just wants more research to be done. I think Bugby actually thinks that UV uh, does help plants, but he can't say anything until he has the proof. He's a scientist. 
He can't say that the science says it until he has the proof. You know what, though? He does say we're waiting for proof. He doesn't say there's no way. He goes, there's no definitive proof right now. And as a scientist, I have to, you know, I have to uh, go by those rules. Uh, but it just hasn't been discovered. It hasn't been found yet. I do like when he says that. And I do have one last thing to say regarding the Bugby experiment. Uh, first of all, he did it from week three on, which isn't how we do it. We do it the last three weeks. Uh, but then he reported, if you go look in that Frontiers article or journal entry, a 3 to 13% increase in cannabinoids. But then said there was no... <laughs> it said it was statistically insignificant, so they didn't report it. I don't know what that means. Maybe they, they needed to, you know, they couldn't replicate it in a bunch of samples. I don't know. Uh, and it did have to do with the duration. He tested it for like one, three, and five hours a day. So I don't know. I'm a little bit confused. <laughs> Even I, I just got to tell you, so I'm reading these peer-reviewed research, and they don't make sense, man. The one guy did it like close to UVC, uh, Rodriguez Morrison in 2021 used 287 nanometer. It's 310 nanometer you're supposed to use. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, they're, they're not doing these studies the way we would do. And then I just went and pulled some information. I have growers that I hang out with that I know that we know through the community. And they tell me what they're doing. Can I read you one? Let's, let's get some real world Pers science experiment. Yeah, this is Fishman. Personally, I run my UVs 10 minutes each hour during a 12-hour light cycle, giving me a total of two hours of UV. I ran the same genetics in two separate 5x5 five five tents, one running UV supplements and one without. I would estimate at least 25% frostier in the UV setup. Okay. You know, and I, I'm just saying that you can't do this kind of. So they run theirs for two hours a day in short bursts. White light. I run mine for 30 minutes each hour of light. So six hours per day. That's a lot. Wow. But they're doing the experiments. You know how long it would take Bugby or anybody else to do all these experiments? Thrack attack. I turned them on during week six of eight of a nine, six through eight of a nine week flower period and kept them lighted for three hours a day. This is how we're going to learn stuff. And I trust these people. If you have a separate 5x5 five five or a decent grower or a good grower that's using a strain that you know and the only variable you change is uh, UV light, that's a scientifically valid experiment. I trust that. I'll bet you Bugby would trust that too. So the science is definitely still out on UV, particularly UVB. I believe there is still something to it or definitely something to it. These are going in my next grow once I have everything else dialed in so I can do a real science experiment about it. But come on, what about you? Do you use UV? Do you use UVB? Let me know what you think. Come on, let me know in the comments. And if you dug this video, Hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, share this one with another grower you know, and check out the other couple of videos YouTube's recommending. We think you'll dig them.